Hi everyone, a warm welcome to you all for the live webinar on the World Egg Day. First of all, wish you a very happy World Egg Day. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. We are streaming live on Facebook and also YouTube channel on the Hibis channel and also different platforms if you are not able to if somebody is not able to join through the Zoom link, they can also watch this video on Facebook Live on Srinivasa Farms page and also YouTube Live on Hibis channel. My name is Travani Polna. I work with Srinivasa Farms Group. Srinivasa Farms is a pioneer in poultry business with 50 years of unmatched experience. Driven by desire for excellence, a pioneer and a business leader, having presence across multiple sectors with common objective of providing quality and affordable nutrition. The World Egg Day is celebrated across the world to help raise the awareness of the benefits of egg and their importance in human nutrition. World Egg Day was established at the International Egg Commission Vienna 1996 conference when it was decided to celebrate World Egg Day on the second Friday of October every year. At Srinivasa Farms, we are celebrating this World Egg Day month with an expansive social media campaign. We are creating educational content on the nutritional and sustainable credentials of the egg while also running weekly quizzes and their annual recipe competition which rewards the creators of the best egg-based dishes. We have also enlisted the support of celebrities and influencers to discuss the importance of important role eggs play in the diet. This live webinar is taking place on World Egg Day with the purpose of promoting egg consumption. Today we are presenting Let Us Explore More, the goodness of egg as we celebrate the World Egg Day and the IEC organization role. Coming to the IEC, the International Egg Commission, the IEC was established at the second international conference held in Bolgona, Italy in 1964. The IEC delivers a unique platform for sharing information and developing relationships by bringing together key industry players. So this is the following agenda for uh, today's sessions. So the, our first speaker, I'll introduce the first speaker, Suresh Shituri. Suresh Shituri leads Srinivasa Farms, a do dominant force in the Indian poultry industry. He's, a passionate, he's passionate about ensuring that the poultry industry is healthy and sustainable through adoption of latest technologies, good rearing practices and welfare of the livestock. Suresh is helping the industry to be more sustainable and responsible in its production and sourcing. Suresh is driven by the mission of eliminating nutritional deficiencies of women and children in India. He's passionately, he passionately advocates poultry as a vehicle of transformation and empowerment. His work has been recognized as a, at a global level and is engaged in advocacy for the poultry industry internationally as chairman of International Aid Commission. We proudly say that he is the first Asian to hold this position in the history of the institution. I'll hand over the platform to Suresh to take it forward. Thank you, Shravani. Uh, everyone, uh, welcome on uh, this 14th uh, World Egg Day. Um, and, uh, uh, very happy to have you all. I think we nearly have 100 people joining the, the webinar. Uh, once again, thank you all everyone for taking your time out and being part of this. Uh, so, uh, without doubt, uh, uh, right now it's good time for egg. I think everybody is recognizing the goodness of eggs. So, let me start my presentation and within that I will of course... Uh, so, okay. Is it uh, visible? Uh, everyone can yes. see? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, so once again, uh, welcome. Um, uh, today, World Egg Day, uh, it's organized by 
World Egg Organization to focus on the crucial role that egg plays throughout our lives as a source of high quality, not just as a high quality pro protein, but uh, you know, all the other benefits it brings together. So, so zero hunger, it is, uh, you know, it's estimated that malnourishment is a reality for about 1 billion people. Eggs have potential to eliminate global hunger by providing a high quality source of protein. So, and the global population is uh, expected to go up to almost 10 billion uh, in the next few years. And out of that, as you can see, most of that would be in underdeveloped and developing countries. So, and, and I think that's where most of the challenges of nutrition are. So, again, over the next 40 years, we need to produce as much food as we have in the last 8,000 years of agriculture. So it is not like we have to grow double, it is as much as what has been produced in the eight, last 8,000 years. So we need, as you know, in the next 40 years, we need that much food and, and we need to think about this. Uh, and uh, 191 million people, so about 19 crore Indians are undernourished uh, between 2014 and 16. Uh, so again, there's a triple burden of malnourishment uh, undernourishment, uh, stunting and wasting, poor growth, inf infections and deaths, uh, poor cognition. So that means, you know, the ability to understand uh, is, is low and memory problems all their life. Uh, hidden anger, uh, hidden anger, which is, I think our governments have done a brilliant job of uh, taking care of hunger. But now there's a hunger of micronutrients and, you know, this is what we call hidden hunger. Uh, poor and this leads to poor growth and development, poor immunity and tissue development, poor health and uh, risk of deaths, and underweight, uh, which is including overweight, including obesity, short-term cardiovascular problems, uh, infections, and poor self-esteem, long-term obesity, diabetes, and other metabolic disorders. So, these are the three uh, burdens of uh, malnourishment. Uh, again, uh, I don't know how many of you are present to this, but almost 60% of children under five in, in India are not growing well. They're stunted, wasted, or overweight. Uh, one in, uh, globally, uh, one in three are not growing. Uh, in India, it is one in two are not growing well. Uh, so this percentage of children aged 26 to 23 months, uh, in, within India and, and you know and what are the results only 25 percent of children in South Asia are being free fed much needed nutrients from animal sourced foods 56 percent of children in South Asia are not fed any fruit or vegetables so this is again a critical problem uh, and this problem is not just for now it's for rest of our future so so percentage of children age 20 to 23 uh, again uh, are eating less diverse diets compared to children in 12 to 23 months, 6 to 11 years. Uh, I think typically we feed them, uh, I know, rice and rasam in a South India. I think I know North India, maybe it's a little different, but similar kind of food. And, and I think, uh, and, and that results in some permanent damage for these children. Uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, uh, impact of malnourishment in uh, 1000 days, the first 1000 days has a lifelong impact. Uh, they're wasted, underweight, stunted growth. Uh, so states in India with the lower per capita state GDP and lower consumption, less than 40 eggs, have a higher percentage of underweight and stunted children when compared to those, those states which are comparing more than 80 eggs per year. So this is an example from Ecuador, uh, the study done. Uh, and uh, they have seen that you know one egg a day uh, from the sixth month onwards uh, has resulted in 47 percent less stunting and 74 percent of children uh, being less underweight. Uh, so you know, uh, and this is critical, I think, and even for India, I think this is the main uh, opportunity for the egg industry to solve. Um, so I think this is what we need to look at now. Uh, egg is the cheapest source of protein for sportsmen, uh, for beauty, 
uh, you know, protein intake uh, increases skin health, hair reduction of wrinkles. Uh, for old people, maintenance of muscles and bones, uh, and for obesity, uh, it increases your satiety, increases your feeling of fullness, and makes you eat less. Weight management, dieting. Uh, I'm I'm a prime example of this. In the last uh, 20 months, I've lost almost 33 kilos. I mean, I was pre-diabetic. No more. Uh, my cholesterol is down from around 200 triglycerides to about 60 now. Uh, my VLDL from around 35, it's down to 11. And this is eating more whole eggs, you know, four eggs every day, full eggs. So, and, and as you all know, egg is the, is the ultimate superfood and is the original and ultimate superfoods. Um, so it contains six grams of food, uh, protein uh, and 14 essential nutrients, uh, each egg. So as you can see, uh, and, and this is... Uh, the main thing is again, the bioabsorbability -absor of uh, eggs is fantastic. So I say, you know, two eggs a day is a must for everyone. And, uh, and, and, and I think we should all now talk about two eggs a day because one egg a day, while it is great, two eggs a day is fantastic. And I think that's what we should recommend. Uh, yeah, and this is, uh, this is what an egg is, right? I mean, uh, it, it contains all these, right? And, and, and I think this is what we need to educate people more on, people around us, governments, policymakers. Uh, and I think, uh, and it's critically important we do that. Uh, so why are these nutrients so important in India? An important building block uh, for bones, muscles, cartilage, skin, blood. Uh, the protein, body uses protein to build and repair tissues as well as making enzymes, hormones, and other body chemicals. A single large egg, as, as I said earlier, contains six grams of protein. Apart from this, eggs also contain all the essential amino acids, which are further help in working with protein in, in your body. Uh, Indian Market Research Bureau 2017 report states that protein deficiency among Indians stands at about 80%, 80% measured against the recommended uh, 60 grams per day. Uh, so I think the recommended is one gram of protein for every kilo of body weight. So I think for some of them, this is even more extreme. Uh, and why are these? In, so FAO, WHO uh, expert consultation have ranked uh, protein uh, evaluation. And as you can see, egg is the highest. And that's why it medically it is known as perfect protein. And, but then it is not just, it's a lot more than a perfect protein. So uh, people sometimes compare it to beans. You can see beans is uh, almost 22% less uh, than, um, than uh, eggs. So, so and, and B12, uh, vitamin B12 is a water soluble vitamin. Very important and uh, and India is very, very uh, deficient in B12, uh, especially in North India, almost 50% are deficient in B12. And I think this is critical for us to recognize that most of these issues start at an age after 50 and, and we are living longer and longer and these deficiencies impact us at the older age, not more. Uh, vitamin D is needed for maintenance of uh, normal blood levels of calcium, phosphate, and in general, uh, and especially in preventing uh, rickets in children on osteoporosis in adults, and uh, and Indians are nearly, I think, about 70 to 80 uh, percent highly deficient in vitamin D. And this is again what an egg can easily help cure. Uh, lut lutein and zeaxanthin, uh, um, again, very important for uh, adults. Uh, 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 especially with eyes in uh, uh, eye disorders, cataracts, macular degeneration can be reduced by consuming. Uh, uh. So here I, I was told that, you know, you can consume 600 grams of uh, spinach. Uh, you have to consume 600 grams of spinach every day to prevent uh, macular degeneration or an egg a day. So you, you can see the choice. Eating 600 grams of spinach a day is next to impossible. Uh, every day for the rest of your life, you know, but an egg a day is very easy. Uh, eggs are also very high in vitamin E, which is a common cause of blindness in the world. And, and India has a very high degree of this. Choline, again, uh, so again, I'm, I'm to, I, I, I saw a report that 
a mother uh, deficient in choline, the children can never uh, uh, be uh, smart enough to the full potential. Uh, no matter how much they they cannot make up uh, that in in their lifetime if the mother is deficient. And again, this is something that is cured by an egg a day, uh, and because uh, the best vehicle for delivering choline. Uh, so that's why I think an egg a day uh, for better health. Uh, especially in children from 6 to 24 months, uh, uh, you know, they, it has huge benefits and I think we should all talk about this and promote this. And, and I think there is also uh, uh, this old science where we get worried about uh, yellow and fat in it. Uh, most of the cholesterol fat in, uh, in yellow is good cholesterol, almost more, I mean, 70% of it, I think. And it's and in addition, it's not just uh, the uh, the protein, right? I mean, all the essential mineral, minerals and 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 vitamins are in the yellow. So so it's very important. And I think up to two eggs a day is perfectly fine. Two whole eggs, uh, and then depending on um, your you know your physical activity and all that, you could probably increase that. So in Uganda, improve uh, where. Uh, there was a study done in our rural Uganda, and they showed both height and weight uh, of uh, of these children has been on par after consuming two eggs per day. Uh, and a Lulon study uh, again on six to nine months, Ecuadorian children has shown that giving children uh, eggs between six to nine months and egg a day has reduced uh, underweight and stunting by seventy four and forty seven percent. So that's phenomenal if you think about uh, the 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 cost of that is so low, it's just five rupees a day, right? So I think, um, so here I wanted to show you how egg consumption has gone in the last, uh, between 2008 and 18. Uh, India, uh, I think, sorry, we missed out. Uh, India has grown about 58%. I think Canada has added 30% uh, uh, here. And, and, and I think the developing world, U US has increased 7%. But this needs to continue for next two decades for India to catch up uh, with the with what is needed. Uh, so I think that gives tremendous opportunities to Indian poultry uh, to the uh, egg industry. So this is a little bit about uh, IEC and how we support. So IEC uh, is part of World Egg Organization, and World Egg Day is what we uh, do to celebrate egg eggs. Uh, promote eggs and also to uh, acknowledge and uh, uh, celebrate the egg farmers. So IEC is an egg producers association. Uh, all the producers are part of this and the egg processes international is where all the processes of egg are part of it. Uh, the IEF is a foundation uh, for promoting, uh, for taking eggs to places where it is not there, like in Africa and all that we're doing projects. It's a social responsibility and development project. Uh, International Egg Education Center is uh, where we're linking human educational professionals globally. So this is again uh, uh, something that we are pushing and going to take up. We have found a uh, task force of some eminent uh, scientists here to so that the goodness of egg can be spread and everybody can be educated all across the world. And the Global Initiative for Sustainable Eggs, this is something I am uh, very, uh, I'm pushing a lot. This is about sustainability of eggs, because as we said, now if you are to produce in the next 40 years food that has been pro equivalent of food uh, that has been produced over the last 8,000 years, we need to do it sustainably. And egg is already a champion in this. It's one of the best uh, on the sustainability scale. But I think we cannot rest there. We need to keep pushing that, and that's what we are going to do through this task force that's been formed. And uh, and so this is World Egg Organization for you. Uh, IEC provides information, latest techniques and trends, training and development, production resources, uh, accreditation, uh, recognition, representation, and, and and we are taking up a lot more activity in IEC, uh, and, and I'm pushing it and especially to make it more relevant, uh, more relevant to you know, the developing world, uh, countries like India and Africa. Uh, so with that, thank you. I think in the second part, uh, uh, you know, we will talk more about these things and maybe some question and answers too.
thank you thank you thank you suresh for the wonderful presentation and the knowledge that has been shared with us all so now uh, the next speaker is mr tim lambert uh, unfortunately he was not able to join us here on live but uh, he was kind enough to send us a uh, very good presentation put together in a video presentation for us all uh, a brief introduction on tim lambert uh, uh, if there are any questions we'll be sharing you a mail id you can uh, send all your queries on that mail id and we'll be answering them and also mr tim also will be making video responses for those particular queries and sending to us so i think uh, shravani i wanted to say this here i think we need to you know appreciate something that under tim's leadership canada which is an advanced country and has always already been consuming lot of eggs have uh, increased the egg consumption by 50% and the canadian farmers are uh, are doing fantastic and i think it's a model for all of us to uh so i i uh, request all of you to pay attention and listen to tim's presentation thank you thank you thank you suresh uh, so uh, tim lambert has led the canadian uh, egg industry through a period of unprecedented growth as chief executive officer of egg farmers of canada He's passionate about sustainable food systems, building public trust, and helping more people in Canada and around the world access the incredible nutrition and protein found in eggs. Mr. Lambert is a founding trustee of the National Egg Foundation from 2017 to 2019. He served as chairman of the National Egg Commission and currently serves as the role as president of the International Egg Commission. He also served as a chair of the Heart for Africa. board of directors and foundation to 2016 to 2019 and is a past member of the egg industry center board of advisors tim was awarded the university of girls prestigious alumni of honor award in 2018 for his professional and volunteer contributions both nationally and globally let's have the video bite good afternoon everyone and uh happy happy world egg day uh, it's a real uh, privilege to have uh, been invited uh to share this uh this with you and share some of my thoughts um and in particular i wanted to thank suresh uh i've known suresh now for quite a few years and he's doing a excellent job as the iec chair through a pretty difficult set of circumstances with covid uh but also suresh and i become a pretty good friends through the years that we've been working together uh and i think he's a valuable contributor to the global egg industry and obviously a uh, big very key player in india what i want to do today is talk about opportunity talk about the opportunity to grow egg consumption i mean is canada is the example uh but but really i think trying to share some thoughts on on how we can grow our industry uh i don't profess any particular knowledge of the indian industry and markets you have that knowledge i don't but uh, i do have some really strong thoughts on how we can grow our businesses grow our industry uh, whether that's canada india or around the world so let's get to it all right uh just a bit of context uh canada is uh is grown steadily over the years and and we don't think it's by accident we think it's be uh, because of the programs that we have in place it's because of the things we do and it's that that I'd really like to to share with you today uh so we've seen considerable growth over the years um probably 60 or so percent in the last in the last 15 years however you guys are growing even more rapidly i think over the last number of years you've grown per capita egg consumption from about 17 up to 70 so your your growth is is higher than ours and it's it's a really really exciting opportunity for for you and i i really hope you see it that way globally we're seeing similar trends around the world people are eating more and more eggs uh, they're seeing the nutritional value they're seeing uh, the affordability uh, the quality of the protein is a, is a huge huge opportunity and and we have a good news story to tell 
I want to talk to you a little bit about production around the world. Um, very interesting, and I think it highlights the tremendous growth opportunity that I see for India in particular. Uh, if you look at the red dots, you'll see the biggest is in China. China produces probably 34% of the world's eggs. And I'll show you a slide in a couple of minutes uh, that shows the per capita consumption by country. They are one of the world's largest consumers of eggs. Now, what's interesting about that is uh, in preparing for this presentation, I saw a stat that uh, India's population will meet or exceed that of China by the year 2027. And when you think about the per capita consumption of eggs in India versus China, uh, there's a very, very interesting long-term opportunity that I see to, to pursue that. Uh, you'll see the U.S. is also a very large producer, probably about 9%, and India is rapidly closing in. Uh, at some point in the next probably couple of years, India will become the second largest producer of eggs in, in the world. So you're on the track, um, and what I wanted to talk to you a bit about today is some of my thoughts on how you might take those next steps, some of my thoughts on how you can go from where you are to even more growth in your industry. Uh, egg consumption in Canada per capita continues to grow. We're now up to about 265 eggs per person per year. Uh, as you can see, that's a dramatic increase since 2009, where our per capita consumption was under 200 eggs. And there's similar for India, showing that increase that I mentioned a minute or so ago, uh, up, to, up to over 70. Now, this is a slide I wanted to share with you that you can really think about why I believe you have such a tremendous opportunity uh, to grow egg consumption and production in India. Uh, you can see the 300 line, I hope. Uh, it's clear enough to you. And the countries that are over 300 are China. Japan is the second largest consumer of eggs per capita on the planet. Uh, and Mexico is number one at well over 350 eggs per person per year. And the other one that's over 300 is, uh, is, is Russia. So if you look at Russia, uh, China, um, Japan, all of those countries with the exception of Japan are, are still countries that you would describe as developing. Now, if you're looking for India, just look for the smallest little yellow box that you can see, and you will see there is your opportunity from where you're at all the way up to 300 eggs per person per year. Uh, I believe it's attainable. I believe you can do it, and, and I'm really quite excited about, about how that can happen. So, this is where I'll start to talk a bit more about, uh, about Canada, uh, but I think I really believe that these drivers of growth in the egg industry uh, transcend our, bear, our, our, bear, our borders. Uh, I really think that um, these are universal opportunities, uh, which is why I'm happy to share what we're doing in Canada. Uh, and as I said at the start, I have no particular specific knowledge of the Indian industry, but I do think what worked here can be modified and, and put, to, put to good use there as well. Well, number one, uh, eggs are a versatile, high-quality, nutritious protein. And I'm going to talk more about this in a few minutes, but uh, it is the highest quality protein of any food source in the world. Um, so the quality uh, and availability of the, of the protein in eggs is unmatched uh, by any other, any other food. And in a diet in India, which is primarily vegetarian, uh, it's, it's a protein that will have a dramatic impact on the nutritional quality of, of diets. So that's a big, big strength we have. Second, for Canada, and I, and I think this is something to be considered, I, I think that in order to show uh, the public, uh, whether it's food safety in particular, and I'll talk about biosecurity in a minute, uh, I think that's an area, if people eat, your product and fall ill because of it, you can you can work, work, work to build the reputation of your industry, talk about the quality of your product. But if you have disease outbreaks like salmonella uh, 
or, or there's a problem with avian influenza that could impact people, uh, that's a huge barrier to overcome. And I think consideration needs to be given to how you can strengthen those on farm systems and programs. And that relates to this point. Uh, I think that in this competitive world where people are getting a lot of misinformation, information, people saying, you know, don't eat animal proteins because uh, impacts climate. Uh, uh, don't, don't eat animal protein because plants are better for you. There's so much mis misinformation that a key, key pillar in Canada is building trust with the public uh, in, in who we are as farmers, what we're doing, and, and the standards we adopt on our farm. Which leads me to, to the other driver of growth is, is this notion of disease management and biosecurity. Um, I know the International Lake Commission has done an excellent job of putting forward a set of global standards for biosecurity. I think they're very attainable. Um, I think the, the use of uh, antibiotics and antimicrobials are coming under increasing scrutiny around the world. Uh, and I think every government is, is concerned with that. And so while it may be less of a problem or a challenge in India today, improving biosecurity is something that I believe is a key driver for growth in our industry. And finally, it's about what you're doing right here today, uh, and that's gathering as a group, uh, talking about how to build a better industry. Uh, but uh, I've been in conversation with Suresh, and it's a project that he and I are very interested in. Uh, we have a system in Canada of sustainable management, um, and what it effectively does is ensure that farmers uh, get a fair return for their work and get a fair return for the aid. Um, it is absolutely not subsidized by government at all. Uh, and so it's a topic that uh, Suresh and I will specifically work on. But I think there's an enormous opportunity uh, for the Indian industry to look at some of how that system in Canada works. And just to illustrate my point, so this graph shows uh, returns to farmers uh, over time. So from January 2010 to January 2020, that yellow line is Canada, and you can see the blue line, which is the returns to farmers, that goes up and down as it does, I know, in India. There's one period of time where it spikes higher than, than Canadian farmers, but you can see that over time, Canadian farmers earn a fair and consistent re, uh, return on what they're paid for producing eggs. A very, very interesting model that uh, I'd love to spend more time talking to you about. So let's talk about the vision for the future of global egg industry. And I say the growth opportunity globally and in India specifically is exponential. So building on this notion of, uh, of efficiency and sustainability, uh, I think you'd be aware of this, but eggs are the most efficient animal protein in terms of uh, conversion of a pound of feed into a pound of protein, eggs are unmatched. The closest animal protein to us might be fish, uh, but, but I think we are, the, we are the number one. That's a great story to, to tell. Uh, eggs have a positive impact on climate change. We did a study a number of years ago now that uh, uh, tracked our industry over 50 years and uh, we have, over that 50 years, a lot of it's to do with genetics, feeding, biosecurity, 41% uh, less energy use, 68% fewer greenhouse gas emissions, 81% less land. Uh, and this one we like to use, we produce 50% more eggs using 50% of the resources that we did 50 years ago, and 69% less water. Now those impacts translate ultimately to the bottom line as well. The cost to produce a dozen eggs can be continuously improved and reduced, uh, and you have a fair return built in. Uh, you can make a living and you can reinvest in, in the things you need to do to build public trust. Eggs aren't meat. Eggs are affordable. If you look at, uh, this is not our data, Egg Farmers of Canada, this is uh, the World Resource Institute, and it shows eggs as a low 
a carbon footprint or a low environmental impact food, uh, similar to nuts, soybean production, uh, certainly stronger than, than other, other meats. And within the Indian diet, it's predominantly vegetarian, I see a massive opportunity for, for eggs to be a key part of diets going forward. And they're also one of the most affordable forms of, of animal protein. Eggs, as you know, uh, well, in some ways, relatively easy to produce. Uh, obviously, there's lots of challenges, but certainly uh, a few birds can feed a lot of people. It's uh, easier to scale up. And um, as an aside, um, the National Egg Foundation, we're doing a lot of work globally. Uh, in fact, even discussing some projects uh, in Asia. Uh, but we have several currently in Africa where we're helping smaller scale farmers enhance their production, enhance their productivity, and become more and more commercially viable. So again, even, even with development projects around the world, eggs are seen as a, as a key tool. Egg production is aligned with the vision of a sustainable food system. And so around the world, these are the uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals. They've been adopted by virtually uh, every country in the world. And if you look at the impact that eggs can play uh, in terms of contributing to less poverty, uh, helping to eliminate hunger, clearly number three, good health and well-being, um, and, and the list, list goes on, uh, industry innovation and infrastructure, uh, climate action, you saw the impact, positive impact eggs can have on, on reducing impact of uh, climate change, life on land, and partnerships. So many, many of the goals of the UN Sustainable Development Goals exactly fit in, in with eggs. So your government, I would hope, would be highly motivated to help your industry grow as well. So together, I think we can revolutionize the future of the egg industry. The time is right. We have a platform for growth. Eggs are one of the few food items I think are poised for exponential growth in India and around the world. And as we continue to improve what we do, uh, our future just gets brighter and brighter. I mean, together, we have an amazing story to share. And anything Canada can do, I started by talking about uh, Suresh and my relationship. Um, certainly, we would be happy to help work with your industry to help you succeed and grow. Happy World Egg Day. Thanks, everyone.
Hello everyone, welcome back. So we'll go ahead with our uh, panel discussion for the next session. So we have Mr. Sanjoy Mukherjee here. Uh, Sanjoy Mukherjee is the executive editor of Indian Poultry Review, the country's oldest poultry industry publication with a lineage spanning five decades. IPR Group is South Asia's oldest poultry media organization. A C Sanjay Mukherjee is a seasoned media professional, spent a quarter of a century with the Times of India before turning entrepreneur and joining the family business to spearhead the re-engineering and digitalization of this 54-year-old colossus. In his other avatar, Sanjay is a business consultant working with clients across a range of categories, including education, hospitality, real estate, jewelry, and retail. His areas of expertise include product launches, brand communication strategies, retail and promotions, and new market development. We welcome you, Mr. Sanjay Mukherjee. Good afternoon, good morning, and thank you so much for this invitation to host the panel discussion today. Uh, best wishes to everybody on World Egg Day 2020. Thank you, IEC and Srinivasa Farms. Before we start uh, today's panel discussion on eggs, much more than the perfect protein, an exceptional uh, superfood, I'd like to build some context for the discussion. I like to say that, you know, if eggs were human, they would be celebrities. The power and the goodness packed into a single egg is phenomenal. Little wonder then that eggs are considered superfoods along with fish, yogurt, chocolates, nuts, olive oil, and blueberries. One gram of egg contains about six grams, or rather one egg, which is 50 grams, contains six grams of proteins and 14 essential nutrients, which includes almost everything except vitamin C. Eggs are also the cheapest source of quality protein with a cost per gram of protein that's even lower than that of dal. Also, the calories per serving is the lowest at about 70 kilocalories per serving. And uh, this is lowest amongst say, chicken, mutton, fish, milk, and dal. However, like all celebrities, eggs have had their fair or rather unfair share of controversies and bad press. There are a lot of myths surrounding eggs. Uh, primarily, the myths are about eggs, consumption, increasing cholesterol levels, Hormones being used in egg production, egg consumption during summer being bad for the body as it generates heat, saturated fats causing increase of blood cholesterol. There are other myths which say that organic eggs are more nutritious than conventional eggs. Also, artificial eggs and plastics being uh, plastic eggs being circulated in the market, the environmental egg impact of egg production, and the alleged AMR being caused due to the poultry industry or the poultry products. However, scientific evidence surfacing since 2008 have consistently pointed out or are continuously pointing to the consumption of eggs being beneficial for human health rather than being harmful. The 2017 PURE study finds that diets high in carbohydrates and not fats are deadlier for the human health. This has in effect given eggs a clean shit. Having said that, on build that context, I would like to uh, introduce Dr. Raghav Sunil, to give us his views on the goodness and health benefits of eggs from the point of view of a medical practitioner. Dr. Sunil is an orthopedic spine surgeon specializing in endoscopic spine surgery. He has trained in latest techniques of spine surgery in India and abroad. 
He's currently working as Chief Endoscopic Spine Surgeon at Avis Hospitals, Hyderabad. He man maintains an interest in nutrition and talks about health on TV and corporate offices regularly. We would request Dr. Sunil to give us his views on the subject today before we get into discussions with him and Sudesh and answer questions. Dr. Thank you sir, for your kind in, uh, introduction. I am uh, Dr. Rajav Sunil. I am an orthopedic surgeon. Uh, I specialize in uh, spine. So in this context of eggs, I must say that egg uh, is a superfood. Uh, superfood is something which is packed with nutrition, uh, which is available readily and has got all the goodness uh, which is useful for the human body. So eggs uh, can be described as a superfood because it contains all the required nutrition uh, nutrients like your fats, your amino acids, multiple vitamins, and it is also low in carbohydrates. Like Sanjay had said, uh, carbs are the new. I mean, are have been identified as the culprit, which cause various uh, problems uh, in the human body. And excessive consumption of carbs in India, especially, has been uh, linked to what has now become a diabetic pandemic. Uh, we are unfortunately called the diabetic capital of the world and also cardiovascular heart diseases capital of the world because our diet is uh, predominantly carb-based like rice or wheat. Um, so egg has a great role to play in this because we need to increase the, pro uh, the consumption of protein in our diet so that the carbs are replaced and the uh, nutritive value is added to the food we take every day. Uh, so, egg, I personally feel, is uh, the most easily available protein, which is very difficult to adulterate, you know. You can't really uh, adulterate an egg. It can get spoiled, that's a different issue, but you can't really adulterate it. And as a doctor, I, actually, I uh, request and advise all my patients, whoever can eat an egg, to eat at least two eggs a day, uh, one week before the surgery and in the convalescence period, which I have found helps their recovery quite a bit. I, I can see a demonstrable difference between people who are consuming eggs uh, and people who are not consuming eggs uh, through the uh, post-operative period. The recovery rates are demonstrably different. And uh, uh, egg is uh, good in all ages. You know, right from the time a child is weaned off the mother's milk, the pro in that process, an egg adds, gives them all the required nutrition, you know, uh, fats, which are required uh, and the protein which is required to uh, for the child to build the uh, muscles. And it also contains choline, which is very, very important in development of the brain. Lutein, which is important for the development of the eyes, vitamin B12, uh, vitamin A, D, E, which are all required for the metabolism, iron, folic acid, which is required for the metabolism and the blood development of the body, uh, in the body. Uh, and... Uh, is uh, like Sanjay was saying, now egg has received a lot of breath. Uh, some of it uh, might be because of inactivity of uh, the produ producing uh, uh, bodies like, you know, International Egg Council who have uh, uh, take uh, initiative and start uh, talking about more goodness of the egg, which they have done now under uh, uh, Suresh's uh, leadership, which is a very good sign. Because people without knowledge or half knowledge, uh, tend to uh, talk about negative effects of cholesterol and fat. The, the cholesterol is required for the human body. We need cholesterol to survive. Cholesterol is the uh, basis uh, from which hormones are produced by the body. Body produces cholesterol on its own because it is required for survival. Uh, there are predominantly two types of cholesterol, low-density low lipoproteins and high-density lipoproteins. HDL is very, very important for the human body. It's a good cholesterol. LDL, uh, if it is it crosses a certain limit, it is bad for you. Yes, and triglycerides are at, at a certain limit of bad human body. Uh, so we, do, we should not uh, correlate consumption of cholesterol to uh, hyperlipidemia or dyslipidemia in a linear fashion. It doesn't work that way. Our body needs to consume cholesterol so that the body uh, body doesn't need to produce it more. That is very important. You should understand the difference between the cholesterol which is in your blood and the cholesterol which you uh, 
consume there is no linear uh, correlation we need to consume cholesterol so that the body doesn't need feel the need to produce more which is the bad thing at the same time a consumption of one or two eggs a day should not be uh, causing any health issues to a normal human being uh, uh, yeah indiscriminate you know consumption of a, a, a person whose physical requirement is not there and if they are consuming 8 9 10 eggs a day it might not be healthy but definitely consuming one to two eggs a day and balancing with taking any enough roughage and, and fruits and vegetables will add to the uh, nutritive value of a meal and definitely egg has to be part of the meal so seeing all this the government of india itself has realized uh, all the governments have realized that uh, providing a neck to a child uh, during the growing years kind of red, increases their body weight uh, and also reduces the incidence of diseases in the future that is one of the reasons government has introduced egg as a part of the midday meal program and the results have been fabulous you know the uh, the protein energy malnutrition the underweight babies the stunted growth brain development uh, issues have all reduced once the eggs have been introduced into the midday meal program um uh, uh at the end of it what i would like to say is egg is the uh, 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 a superfood uh, which is require, which which will give you all the essential amino acids essential amino acids are the building blocks basically amino acids are the building blocks for the protein essential amino acids are the ones which your body doesn't produce itself you know you have you have to take it from outside and egg is all this packed into one uh, nice little package which can be consumed easily which is available which is cheap uh, as compared to other proteins gram to gram uh, like sanjay has already said and uh, i feel uh, it is uh, uh, very very important to consume egg as part of your uh, balanced diet thank you thank you dr raghav that is that was a wonderful uh, talk very encouraging could i now request suresh to say a few words before we get on with some questions i think uh, raghav said everything that needs to be said about egg so i i, I don't know i mean me talking about it i think uh, uh, and and that's critical i think uh, raghav thank you very much uh, always uh, i think and he's been always on the forefront of people eating right and he understands that mostly and uh, and i think like he said you know i think he explained that need for cholesterol beautifully i think uh, and uh, so i think uh, sanjay i think we can start because i i don't think I, that so i like to ask raghav a few questions first from the medical perspective because i think that yes, is keen that people understand that uh-huh. so in general would you say that uh, eggs are good for a heart patient or should a heart patient consume eggs at all what would be your uh, take on that yes sir. there are multiple reasons why a patient develops a heart problem uh, so all the justifies your you know your consumption means also today when we are in a situation where building immunity is become very important in the wake of yes. covid yes, sir. there are multiple the situation where we are in So, do eggs have a role to play in that? Uh, in that uh, protein, protein is the most important uh, food group when it comes to uh, developing immunity. Uh, it gives the body the wherewithal to repair itself uh, in if it is under attack, like say during a surgery or an injury, where the body recovery uh, is dependent upon your uh, protein consumption, and it also helps in building up immunity. Uh, we have a certain hair braid politicians who come up with all this fancy this thing who came up with you know this uh, fear mongering in the early stages of the uh, epidemic pandemic uh, but i think people have realized that you know ex uh, uh, help a lot in developing immunity especially during covid times uh, so uh, i advise my patients to take at least one or two eggs a day uh, uh, during the pandemic also because it will add to the immunity then the body is Uh, you are basically strengthening your body's immune responses, wherein your chances of your recovery increase or your uh, your body doesn't suffer as much if, even if you kind of get exposed to COVID. A question to Suresh now, please. Uh, many findings have pointed out that Indians are vitamin and protein deficient. How does IC plan to tackle that or to handle that issue? Does yeah, it have and, any plans. 
yeah and so this is of course india is uh, uh, takes a big share of the world on this but it's india is not the only one who's uh, all the developing countries and the underdeveloped countries this is a major problem and uh, and a cause for most of the malnourishment which is close to a billion people impacted today uh, and what we have done uh, sanjay from iec is that we have formed a task force on this uh, so that uh, you know we have a, a, a group of uh, scientists um, and through also the international egg nutrition center so that you know we can get all the knowledge and the various experiments being done in the various parts of the world you know and then that can be spread to everyone uh, and that's what we have done and we are also working on more uh, things now you know we are with the industry uh, and with the biggest players in the industry and with the allied industry and all that we are trying to uh, get together and you know create a team now so that we can start spreading uh, so there are one or two messages we are looking at like one is more than a perfect protein uh, you know using that line to educate people that it's just not perfect protein it's it's lot more than that and the second line also which we are we still need to find a i think an attractive this thing is that it is actually the most complete food for humans after mother's milk so how do we say that is as what we are looking at and but these are two things i think with which we will go forward take that message and uh, so that's the idea sanjay so suresh how much is ic focused on uh... Asia per se, or India in uh, particular. So, uh, so IEC's uh, focus to a large extent actually was the developed world, right? It was uh, Europe, uh, Americas, and and uh, and Japan to an extent. But you know, this is where uh, to a large extent, I think IEC's focus on the developing world and especially Asia. I think you can say the beginning of that is. Uh, you know, co-opting me onto the board, and then, then, and you know, making me, pushing me to become the chair. I think is the new. Uh, uh, that's IEC's recognition that they are not uh, been doing a very good job of that, and 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 that's what that's the direction in which I am pushing Sanjay, and uh, and and now recognizing that they have extended my term to uh, one more year, which has never happened again in the history. so yeah so that's what we are doing uh, and there's a lot to be learned uh, sanjay uh, you know we are a different uh, set of games how things go on say in india or or in china to you know 35% of the eggs it's already a brilliant consumer still increasing but for people to come together and talk about it very difficult and uh, you know that's 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 a different program and you know and then you know and the other issues that get complicated i think uh, you know we are complex uh, as asians we call ourselves asians but you know it's it's a very complex and i think that's the that's where the the challenge is what makes it fun i guess so yeah we are working on that sanjay i think and iec is serious about that because they recognize uh, 60% of the eggs today are from asia and i think over the next 20 years uh, so as india keeps increasing i think uh, close to 70 75% of the world's eggs will be in asia and and then if you add africa i think uh, you asked me 20 40 90% of the eggs will be in these two continents so they recognize that and 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 we are pushing towards that and from a commercial perspective if we look at things from a commercial perspective uh and the current context of covid and the associated health issues of the community requirement uh what do you think is the scope for uh, and we've seen a shift in consumer behavior in terms of more health foods more packaged foods more clean foods more hygienic foods so in that context how do you see branded eggs uh, kind of uh, having its impact in the market or as a matter of fact enriched eggs vitamin enriched eggs selenium selenium enriched eggs so how do you think that market is going to behave right now and how that market is going to behave uh in the next 3 4 5 years let's say i think there's definite opportunity now uh, uh, i mean branded for branded sake i don't know uh, but you know but things something that gives more like uh, hygienic uh, um, better hygienic pr- product and like you were saying enriched eggs and all that um eggs can potentially not potentially uh, two eggs uh can give you uh, exactly what a multivitamin tablet can give you and you know and 
and in the right quantity like like if you say d3 uh you know you need about 600 iu so you know x can be taken up to 300 iu uh, very safely and uh, economically and so eating two eggs gives you gives you all the vitamin d3 but if you now want to take it through supplements so i take about 5000 iu uh, sanjay every day but then my doctor tells me i mean i'm there now at maybe at a middle level you know it's i'm not deficient but i'm not doing too well also and and so, so then my friend who's a doctor tells me that actually i need to increase that uh, you know instead of doing 5000 every day maybe i should take 45 50 or 60000 uh, in once a week so but then my point is you know through an egg it's not just d3 you know like rago was saying you know it's the right cholesterol then choline selenium uh b12 and you know there's so many things you know that you get through that and then you get to fill your stomach right and uh, and and fun way you can eat boiled you can eat burji you can eat uh, you know any way you want so i think uh, the opportunities for egg are tremendous it's uh, it's not almost everywhere it's the cheapest source of protein and 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 the bang for the buck uh, suni sanjay is i think where its greatest this thing is you know i mean one egg uh, is is equal into a glass of milk uh, you know drinking 200 250 ml of milk or eating a 60 grams egg uh, you get actually more from an egg and i'm not dishing the milk i think it has its space uh, but point is you know if uh, on in a hurry in the morning or for children you know giving them that uh, tremendous benefit uh today we are about what the third addressing and have the are we looking at um, you know the market of liquid eggs packaged liquid eggs or dry egg egg powder so to speak at least for household consumption as well as for the industrial uh, usage so typically uh, powdered egg uh, sanjay is used uh, mostly to uh, as a commodity to get a cheap source uh, like in japan and all that you know when uh, so i think a powdered egg is not a very highly uh, commercial product of course for some liquid uh, proteins and all that they use but uh, most bakeries and everywhere around the world they use liquid eggs and i think liquid eggs has a tremendous potential in india especially where convenience is needed and you know and and, and from that point of view um i think it has a great potential and it will take off i think it will slowly slowly i think we have to start it's a chicken and egg story uh, you know unless somebody starts the products and then uh, so we ourselves are working on this say uh, health drinks uh, and also you know can we make like omelet mixes and all that so we yeah. make the Uh, for consumers in the morning and i think uh, so like like raghav has been saying i think to a large extent it's been a failure of the industry we've been too happy selling shell eggs and um, and then you know we think boiled egg and a liquid egg are uh, you know we have reached the zenith of processing but i think no i think snackification of eggs i think is where fantastic opportunity is there you know i see virat kohli promoting uh, you know some snacks and i looked at the back of the cover it is like my entire days carbs in one packet you know it's it's like 150 gram packet <laughs> my entire days carbs is in it and and i think the salt in it is like crazy so we are now working on this sanjay is that you know can we develop a similar wafer with maybe 26% uh, protein and eggs are the best medium for that and we have done some experiments come out very well and they should come out soon into the market you know where um, you know these children they can eat the same chips and all that but you know actually they're getting uh 27 28% protein against you know 2 2 3% protein and 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 uh, so and i think that's the that's the future going to be sanjay i think once we do that then i wouldn't be surprised with uh, a per capita consumption of like you know uh china i think will get to 500 eggs per capita uh because they're still growing believe me they are growing uh, on absolute numbers as fast as india is growing although they are five, already eating four times or five times more eggs than india is but they love eggs and 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 the japanese too are now actually they are taking on a game and especially with covid now they are they are saying two eggs a day should be the standard so from 360 eggs they want to go to 720 eggs a year over the next few years and and and, and raghav should that uh, will support me in this i think they are the healthiest people in the world 
and uh, in fact the problem in japan is they have the highest uh, geriatric uh, suicide rate because they're not dying uh, so and 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 and, and but yeah so the, like they say you know the when we were there last they were saying suresh any food doesn't matter what you want to increase the nutritional value of it they say add an egg and uh, like we eat uh, you know uh, egg and dal or whatever rice and dal what they love to do is hot steaming rice break an egg on it mix it up and start eating that's it that's their favorite uh, way of consuming uh, you know i mean that's their like staple diet yeah and since you did touch upon the uh, issue of uh, per capita consumption our population our non veg eating majority country although the egg being vegetarian non vegetarian is a that's another debate but uh, so how do you see our per capita consumption moving or what do you think should be done to uh, by we the government is one but then how as individuals as producers as the industry how do we actually uh, promote that because we've not done very much uh, really we've done maybe efforts have been there but the outcomes have not been there yeah i think see uh, i think uh, years back i think ra uncle and dad and all that they came up with an ad uh, sunday or monday roj ka one day and even now we keep talking about the same thing you know that's been like what 20 plus years now right or 25 years i think and the point is uh, i think we need to uh, definitely we need to do a better job of promoting and and it's so easy you know all our superstars uh, you know uh, bodybuilders and all that they all look at how many eggs they eat they eat between 10 to 20 eggs to you know maintain that physique and all that the sports persons uh, gopichand the pulela gopichand you know he, i i i read this they saying that if you are not willing to eat animal protein uh, eggs and chicken he says don't bother coming for training because he says you can't compete against the chinese and japanese and i can't uh, waste my time uh, on on you know because if you can't have the stamina to compete so the point is that right and 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 uh, i think we need to do a better job of that uh we definitely need to do that and i think if we do that my expectation is in the next 5 years we'll double our uh, consumption uh because our base is so slow right i mean slow low we are not uh, uh like Jap- uh, you know like uh, china or japan or canada where the base is already very high i think we have a fantastic opportunity and and sanjay again that's the point right every egg consumed more per capita creates 40000 jobs and uh, so just imagine the the opportunity that creates you know i mean if you're going to add say in the next 10 years 100 eggs per capita uh, which is very much in the realm of possibility uh, so i don't know for 100 into 40000 jobs you know i mean if you, okay even if you think okay we get automated and all it will come down to 30000 jobs just imagine the scale of that and what will happen in the rural economy and then think about the corn needed for that so how much how many farmers are supported on that and then the soya cake the uh, you know the sunflower cake the you know i mean you look at all that just look at how many boats will be lifted and then our children will be less malnourished our mothers will be less malnourished um great athletes you know i mean like the chinese they they were telling us you know last time we were in iec in uh, in kyoto they were saying watch our egg consumption and look at how our olympic medals went up i did not do the correlation sorry but i mean i think i should be sure this it should sit and do that is how did the consumption go up that's what they said you know just you see the it's directly related to how our athletes are because uh, again their point is you know they are small bodied they are not uh, very heavy physiques so there's limited uh, you know how, what they can eat right and that's where i think eggs plays a fantastic role for them because it's a power packed uh, package and nothing i think in uh, in, in nature is better than that so i think the question is the phenomenon sorry. i think we need to uh, get together spend a little bit of money and i think so far we are used to growth happening organically you know okay covid came we were all crying now demand has come you know we are all enjoying but the fact is what have we done in this almost nothing yeah there's a question from the audience from dr vijay makija on your views on the egg sector uh, generating employment and contribution to and contributing to the gdp 
So yeah, I think so. Today we, I think the egg sector. I was just calculating on a very uh, nominal basis. You know, I think contributes to about fifty-five thousand crores uh, to the Indian economy. Uh, and uh, uh, I think over the next, uh, uh, I like I say ten years. I think it will get. It should cross a lakh and a half crores um, contribution to the Indian economy. And as I said. Every egg uh, is is about thirty five to forty thousand jobs, uh, and and eighty ninety percent of these jobs are in the rural area. So you you can uh, you can imagine the impact our industry has, and and uh, and one thing we are proud of, Sanjay, over the last fifty five years of our starting in this is how many millionaires we've generated, uh, and I think and that's what we are really proud of. And of course, we have benefited tremendously from this. There's absolutely no doubt about it. uh but but i think our uh, like my own son you know uh, when he was thinking when he was finishing in his final year that's what he asked me he says dad uh, what are the opportunities for indian egg industry and i showed him the numbers and then he says uh, then he he wanted to go meet farmers and and i took him around with me for a week and he said wow you know he says uh, he says why because i've been since he was 15 i've been trying to kind of tell him to go do look at something else because i didn't want uh, a prince to come and sit here and think that uh, you know and i know if i say that directly then i'll have issue with his mother uh, so i was trying to tell him that he should only come into the industry if he's really passionate about it and he saw that and and, and now of course he spends his time with his uh, grandfather every day understanding the industry i think and are every day he gets coached and trained by him uh, and and uh, you know but then the point is yeah that's what is a dad this is phenomenal you know we have a space here people have a certain respect i don't have to go fight for you know being recognized and all that and second he says this industry can grow so much over the next 20 years which is his career time right he says there's i mean almost unlimited opportunity here so he says i would be a fool to go look at doing something else you know so yeah and like we were saying you know as we develop products and i think as we do that Oh, there will be some multi-billion-dollar uh, uh, companies built in Indian agriculture, and I think more importantly, you know, we have a huge opportunity in Africa. I think as we build this, because the same model will work in Africa, and Africans are going to add a billion people in the next uh, 50, 60 years. So just imagine that opportunity. So, yeah. A question to Raghav, please. Yes. Uh, do eggs help in building stronger bones uh in protecting the body in building stronger bones so for older people particularly do you think it has a role in protecting people against osteoporosis and stuff like that see yes uh, definitely uh, see the bones are not just a function of calcium and vitamin d they are a function of multiple other things like you know general health muscle tone uh so egg being rich in protein will help with the muscle tone it has got calcium it has got vitamin d which are all what are required for your uh, stronger bones so especially uh, in elderly elderly, elderly people uh, who require who, whose consumption of calcium containing foods is generally reduced because the milk consumption uh, uh, doesn't really happen in the elderly age in, at least in india uh, so eggs play definitely play a good role in uh, maintaining the bone health yes And, and, and one uh, thing, uh, uh, Sanjay, I wanted to uh, you know point out one more thing. Uh, you know, there is a condition called age-related macular degeneration, right? Uh, this is uh, uh, you know uh, your retina starts developing spots, uh, which is uh, you know, and it's an irreversible condition, right? You cannot reverse it. At best, you know, you can only slow it and stop the degeneration. now what happens in this is the spot develops on your eye and for these people it is like you know tv pe ek dabba hai you know and in life is like that everything is like that you know they there's a black hole in in their life now now one of the ways you can avoid this is by eating 600 grams of uh, uh, you know spinach uh, is what you say spinach spinach right <laughs> 600 grams of spinach for the rest of your life imagine that right and and you know but an egg a day uh solves the problem and and like and again like raga has been saying especially for bone health and all that so it has i think uh, it's it's uh, it's fantastic uh, at at that age and you know uh so yeah in uh, in our country you know for some reason as you get older 
people stop eating protein which is like the most dangerous uh, thing for people's health and especially for women and you know in the in the sense stop eating protein in the sense non veg ban kar dete and, and you can stop non veg but i think at least least i would say is you should eat two eggs uh, because 1 gram of protein per kg of body weight is a must and high quality protein right and i think that's the point uh, yeah thank you so this is a question to both of you actually uh you know uh, your views on animal protein vis-a-vis vegetarian protein uh suresh do you want to take it first yeah so see uh uh sanjay i think one thing you need to recognize is uh, that this is a natural uh i mean i have read this book uh, by wackler mill and which uh, which uh, bill gates had recommended you know it says do we need to eat for uh, animals and in, and i read that thinking that it's a counter of this thing let me also get educated because sometimes you have to follow so i do read books by vegans and all that on what the logic is and all that because i don't know i i i'm not saying i know the whole world and everything about life right and sometimes we discover certain things you know that we've been believing and we were wrong about it because as science progresses but one thing i learned is that you know uh, when chimpanzees were fully vegetarian and i don't know how many of you know chimpanzees eat the meat right they are uh, they do eat uh, they eat more than uh, five times more than an average indian does uh, uh, that was again a surprising thing there i i heard, you know they per capita they eat 25 kilos of meat a year and you know indians are at four or five kilos so uh, so when they were purely vegetarian you know and that's when the gorilla evolved out of them and that is the structure for eating you know purely that kind of food and our system has been developed uh, is is has evolved for high density food right and nothing that is animal uh, this thing and and our brains have grown over time because of the high density food we eat now that doesn't mean that in the modern day that you still have to do that no there are options right uh, but you really have to be a scientist and 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 what you need to recognize sanjay is the issues probably won't affect you at 15 18 22 25 but after 45 50 is when that lifetime of if you do that you know then you will have issues the rest of your life so and especially when it comes to eggs you know they are unfertilized uh, you know there is no life in it so and like gandhi ji said if uh, you know if milk is vegetarian well, then why would eggs not be right and i think uh, and that's the point and i think uh, my only caution to people who don't want to eat eggs and all that is please please watch out you have to be more vigilant about what you are eating about balancing your diet and all that you know just you just can't eat uh, like i was just saying right i mean we are from andhra so we eat something called pesaretto which is our uh, favorite all of us love eating it and people say that that's uh, i think they call it chivda or something in rajasthani it's the green bean the green this thing or moong beans as they are trying to be right but for every gram of protein you're getting 3 grams of carbs so at 77 grams of me needing protein that means i have to eat almost 210 grams of carbs to get my daily and that would kill me faster than anything else and and, and so i think that's where we need to be careful about uh, and and paneer you know somebody posted paneer and egg you can have i was just checking the cost of paneer uh, you know on 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 big basket and it's like seven times costlier than a kg of eggs so <laughs> i don't know how you can recommend uh, you know a uh, uh, rickshaw puller's children or something like that you know you can ask them to pay that much for that for what what are they getting nothing you know i mean so uh, over to you rago uh, i i i believe uh, gram to gram cost uh, i mean the amount of protein in a gram of food you eat in vegetarianism i mean would probably be much much less than what you would get in an egg or maybe chicken and the cost also is not comparable and like you said if you are if the child or the, if the expectant mother is not getting enough protein during her pregnancy or if the child is not getting enough protein during that initial few uh, years of their life the effects will be felt throughout the child's life you know uh, their health uh, their body, their expected total growth their uh, development of their vital organs their immunity levels will all be subpar as compared to the child who has re- received enough protein uh, so and uh, the quality wise the animal protein uh, especially the egg and chicken or fish uh, would be definitely uh, superior to what you would get through pure vegetarian sources 
uh, sidestepping the argument about vegetarianism non vegetarianism this would probably mean more bang for the buck uh, and uh, and associated carbs and other things are not there when you you know go with your with egg consumption so that way it would make lot more sense to consume egg thank you raga we'll take some questions from the audience night right now uh, there's a question to suresh from uh, somi reddy garu uh, andhra pradesh state government is providing five eggs a week to all government run schools students even during the corona holidays attendance has improved tremendously and health is reported to be good will the iec take it as an all india campaign to increase egg consumption in india through central government publicity department <coughs> yeah so this is definitely a huge opportunity because andhra government as uh, you know is as told us that you know that it's not only attendance has gone up and and marks have gone up almost 15% uh, but the most critical thing uh, sanjay what they have told us is that the behavior of these children has improved tremendously and and i was like you know what do you mean by behavior you know how do you measure behavior so then they said the the teachers have reported that these same children earlier would in class you know would like just like not get anything you know when the teacher is talking they were glassy eyed everything would fly over their head have now started asking questions uh, you know participating in class and they said you know the generally lot more involved in life so i think that's the critical thing we need to uh, recognize sanjay and and yeah we need to do this and you know study this and i think take it to especially states like mp uh, and you know where there's lot of resistance to this happening and and you know bihar where you know every year when rain start the uh, winter starts thousands of children are dying for uh, needlessly you know and and in up also and all that and i think it doesn't happen so much in south because our children are healthier they are eating better and and you know sometimes uh, you know the the uh, even like uh, the prime minister also i think is uh, uh you know uh, they they point out that children in gujarat are not as healthy as in tamil nadu and kerala and and this is the primary reason not because the children are not but you know i, I think we saw that in, uh, children in uh, gujarat are eating one egg a week whereas these three states are eating between four to six eggs a week so i think that's a huge opportunity we need to work on that of course we need to work on that without pissing off people and not making people wrong and you know and and also uh, sanjay on the other end you know if every state starts giving to more uh, so we also need to recognize you know even if one state starts every two years uh, i think that will be good enough for us for the industry so we'll work on that and and we'll definitely and iec itself as i said you know iec cannot come and do what india needs to do uh, they can provide us the platform they can provide us the knowledge uh but uh, you know it's the indian industry that needs to do and that's what iec is now creating the platform where the knowledge and what is needed can be shared and they are willing to do it freely right i mean the canadians like you have you've seen tim's presentation and talk where he's generously ready to you know i mean they are ready to spend money also like whatever cost them the resources wise to give us but i think for us to ask them to come and do advertisements in india would not be fair a question to raghav from yes. gautam bhadra uh in old people uh, tissue degeneration is rapid and do eggs help in tissue uh, regeneration or aid tissue degeneration the protein breakdown breaks down the muscles break down more in elderly that is why you see that the muscles become weak the limbs become thin and you start developing a pot belly kind of a thing after certain age uh so we need amino acids uh, amino acids are the building blocks for the muscles they are basically the building blocks of proteins so we need to have high intake of protein at all ages including the elderly age in india we have this misconception that you know at after certain age we start stop taking proteins only you know eat some carbs they, they feel that carbs are light food yes they are light they get absorbed fast that is the problem they get absorbed fast they get metabolized fast your insulin starts spiking up you know all the metabolic disorders start coming in we need to take uh, protein which are easily absorbable especially our egg, egg would play a major role there 
normally in the olden days you know i don't i don't remember i don't know how many of you remember there was this very stinky drink called protein x it would be very difficult and it used to be like commonly available in all the pharmacies which were prescribed especially for the elderly they used to put them through the nose and what not uh so egg is a very very cheap and a tasty alternative to all of those uh so uh, yes definitely a consumption of good quality protein will help uh, maintain the muscle mass and the tissue viability in elderly also yes Uh, so, yeah. so uh is it recommended to have egg the yolk of eggs definitely yes uh, in moderation uh, one or two a day should not be a problem like i said the uh, the correlation between the triglycerides in your blood and triglycerides which you consume or any protein or any any fat you are consuming or cholesterol you consume is not a linear one if you do not consume any uh, cholesterol in the form of egg or whatever you are putting you know triglycerides again it yeah in the sense there is a uh, metabolism which is kind of gone wrong you know the process has gone wrong you can't shut down the process uh, of uh, triglyceride production but uh, it has been observed that you know if you consume reasonable quantities of egg your triglycerides might also come down See if somebody has a doubt, it's a very simple thing. You know, try, checking your triglycerides is a not a very you know expensive test. Uh, you should start consuming one or two eggs a day, and then in a month's time, get your triglycerides checked. Uh, and you know, if triglycerides are not getting under control, you probably should take some start in some medicines which are generally given for these things. But we should not stop consuming uh, reasonable quantities of good quality protein and fat, which is very very important for your. regular metabolism you know to get keep your body in balance for its regular functions a yeah, question think, and, and then i think at that place you you know i would i would say you know take maybe a little bit of less oil in your in your diet you know reduce cut down on the other sources of uh, yeah, cut down maybe a tablespoon of oil in your cooking uh, you know that that would probably help you lot more in the long run uh then i i would say you know for 3 months like raghav said you know you try it out uh but of course you can't eating can't keep eating lots of carbs and expect uh, triglycerides and all that to control you know carbs and vegetable oils are the two things that you really need to watch out for sanjay and as i said that's what i did you know and that's what i completely since lockdown has started uh, i mean i lost a lot of weight but my cholesterol and all that was still okay it was not like it had not come down to under 100 i mean so i'm talking of triglycerides and uh, this thing but then once lockdown had started i really started looking at it you know keeping my carbs under 100 calories a day and and all that and and i have seen phenomenal results and not only me lot of my friends who have i've been advising and all that lost 25 30 kilos during the lockdown and in a healthy way right i mean and they're checking i, I always tell them that every month please keep checking your blood because you know it's easy i'm not a doctor and you know i have read certain things and all that but at the end of the day you know i remember what i remember and not so but i have consciously make sure that they're testing the blood and meeting doctors and all that and all of them are doing phenomenally well now uh i don't know how much i contributed to egg consumption increasing they're definitely eating a lot more eggs but i don't know if it increased the egg price so much because of that but yeah we have a very simplistic take on things in the sense in india we like to think that you know i eat bendy my the liquid in my joints will increase it will become more lubricated or if i drink bone soup my bone becomes and it's not a very linear correlation whatever you eat breaks down into the constituents and they are rebuilt by the body so we should understand that and uh, if you are not taking any cholesterol your body starts metabolizing and producing some of it in the body which will actually make the system much worse so uh, you need to kind of you know balance it and cut down on the other sources don't blame the egg only for all your problems uh, and, think, like, and we have this funny notions you know always talks about what one grandmother or grandfather who's lived to 80 90 or 100 when you know when we were growing up in 70s india's average was uh, 47 48 years right yeah. and and if you go back long enough you know the world average was 27 200 years back sanjay and we should be We are. We were a very poor country who were really, uh, uh, focusing only on carbs because we got volume of it. It was not quality food we were eating. You know, 
Uh, right. and, 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 and look at how they were working, Raghav. I mean, look yeah. at how they used to, you know, they, they didn't yeah. have galleries or cars or anything, right? I mean, mm. so the, to, even today, you can't compare yourself to a rickshaw puller. You know, as a rickshaw puller, you know, the uh, carbs you can eat, right? And, and like, uh, or like, you know, uh, Michael Phelps, the swimmer, he needed 15,000 calories every day to maintain himself, right? So he yeah. can eat a lot of carbs, but you know, because He's that guy is swimming for 10 hours a day, right? Now you can't, now that's the problem I think we forget and you know, and uh, in, you know, when we talk about, uh, oh, apne ek mein khata de, but they were not living long yet. And even today, that's what I'm saying. What did I look at? Now, if I continue like that at 110 kilos and with whatever I was doing, now, will I live long? Absolutely. But my life from 60 on, only pills and, you know, maybe visiting Raghav and, you know, you know, I like Raghav a lot. My best friend is a cancer doctor. But, you know, I don't want to go meet them in the clinic. <laughs> you know, that's not good for us, right? And uh, so, and if you want to avoid that, I think that's where, you know, our protein consumption in India and that is the big reason why, you know, and, and uh, Sanya, that's what I keep telling my line I use is if veganism and vegetarianism is such a fantastic thing, then Indians should be the best people in the world. Yeah? I mean, we shouldn't be ranking at the bottom of every health parameter. Right? Why, why are we there? We should be, you know, the epitome of health, you know, everybody like Japanese, you know, living to 100 or whatever it is. And, you know, joy are, you know. And look at how many of you know people at my all how many of my classmates you know are suffering with diabetes, BP, so many issues. And when I look at them, I'm like, you know, wow, I'm, I'm proud of myself about how I'm taking care of myself. Yeah. And and I'm eating like never before now. So but eating it right, yeah. Eating right. Raghav, a question which has come to us. A question which has come to us, a quick question which has come to us from one of our viewers on YouTube, Ravi. Can eggs help obese children lose weight? Absolutely. Uh, juvenile obesity can it tackle juvenile obesity. Again, obesity in children has to be first. We need to see if the child has got any hormonal uh, imbalances. Other issues have to be ruled out. If it is pure and simple obesity because of excessive consumption of carbs or lack of exercise, uh, we need definitely eggs would help. Eggs would help because is you can fill his tummy without carbs. Simple. And he would probably be uh, less hungry uh, or uh, not hungry for longer in between because his tummy is full. Is full because, because of protein and the fat in it. The operative word is reduce the carb consumption and increase your protein consumption, which will uh, make the body burn the existing uh, fat in the body. At the same time, the child has to be you know treated as a whole in the sense uh, work at look at his other issues, you know, increase his uh, physical activity, uh, and uh, you know, uh, genetic issues are also some things you need to look at. Definitely, it will help. So, yes, yeah. and, and and I think uh, Raghav is right on that. And you know, I think we should again be careful about finding simplistic answers. Uh, some, some children might have certain issues, but one thing for sure is, uh, you know, carbs uh, uh, increase cravings for more carbs. And just look at the amount of sugar we are eating, right? And, and you know, like, uh, Sanya, you know, the Japanese, uh, they are as rich as anybody else in the world, right? They eat, in, they eat 16 kilos of sugar a year, right? We are at uh, 18 kilos of sugar a year, right? The whole Western world is at 38, 40 kilos of sugar a year. And, you know, the correlation, I mean, you look at it, why are the Japanese so healthy? They're eating an egg a day. And they don't eat 100 kilos of protein like the Americans and, and all that are eating. They don't eat so much protein also. The protein is probably at 60, 70 kilos. You know, animal, all the other animal proteins, they're in moderation. But they should, and they love the, you know, cakes and all that too. You know, it's not like the Japanese don't eat at all. But they eat in a certain moderation. And that's as simple as that. And today that is the problem, you know, is children go, you know, when the carbs eating, I'm watching with my own daughter. You know, and we're slowly trying to convince her to move away from eating so many carbs to, you know, increasing. And, you know, when you eat more protein and high quality fat, Sanjay, I think that's again important. And there's nothing higher quality than animal fat. You know, if you have some resistance, it's a different story. Uh, you know, but old school, you know, girni ka jo oil nil, 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 of course, today they call it uh, cold press and charge you four times. 
but you know, <laughs> I would say go back to ground net or sesame. You know that uh, I am conscious about that because cold press bowl thing, then you know they charge you four times more. And it's the same bloody thing, you know, which all our villages say, "Ata ta the bachpan se." You know, ground net or this thing or ghee. I mean, I today, Sanjay, everything is only in ghee. And you know, and and, and I'm telling you, as as I said, you know, I'm monitoring myself, I'm checking myself, and I've read a lot of books on this. And that is the problem, you know. Once, after na, when your protein consumption and your fat, good quality fat, if they make up 75 to 80 percent of your daily calories, I'm telling you, within a week or two, you will start. Your body will start regulating. It will not allow you to overeat. आप try anybody try within two weeks I am telling you your body will repair itself and stop uh, not allow you to eat but you have to be conscious within that, that time period about your carbs carbs I am telling you I uh, make you want more carbs and especially sugars and and I am telling you it's it's a and you know three four days I drop the ball you know just so I mean doesn't have to start with you know gluttony on day one. But two three days, I eat more than I eat, and I don't watch. Within fifth day, I see my craving for carbs goes up. And you know, whereas you know, today I can't eat. You know, three thousand. My app tells me that I can eat four thousand calories a day. I am not able to eat beyond fifteen hundred calories a day. <laughs> so, since we are speaking about uh, cold press oils and the economic uh, impact of it, you know, in terms of charging more, uh, we had a question from Dr. E. C. Bose. Saying that enriched eggs are being sold at three to four times of price of uh, normal eggs, is that justified? So, see, um, I was once, you know, at one of the IEC conferences. I was asking a scientist, you know, uh, naturally, this is a white man from US. You know, I said, sir, what is this? How? What is the difference? You know, why are organic eggs there? Why are they claiming they are better eggs? You know, they have more nutrition and all that. He says, all that is humbug. He said, "An egg is an egg, at the basic level. Now, if you want it to be better, then you can make any system, right? Be it cages, any system, you can make an egg better by what you feed it. You want more vitamin D in it? Feed the chicken more vitamin D. The chicken is more efficient at converting that than we are, right? It doesn't need like it doesn't need ten times or something like that to convert it, right? And essentially that. And and whatever you get through egg is one is to one bioabsorbed." So you don't need to eat eight times, right? You need two hundred, three hundred IU. You eat three hundred IU through eggs, aajata. So I, then I said, then what is all this humbug? He says, you know, and this is where I think I learned from the white, the white man, right? You have to learn from the marketing and and all that stuff, which I think we are not very. We sometimes are too naive. So I said, boss, if somebody is willing to throw money at you because you added some tag there, right? Don't be an idiot. You know, do that and take that money. and that's the point and you can't blame people right and 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 i think it's a failure of uh, again communication from our side uh, on the other end uh, you know uh, sometimes you wonder you know uh, so they you know you know somebody sends you a message on whatsapp saying that something and you stop eating eggs yeah and then you know what is the, nothing and that's what happened right and they killed the almost in feb and march almost killed and you know this is going to result in eggs at 7 rupees or 8 rupees and this is going to deny eggs to the poor guys you know this is stupidity on nothing there is no basis to what is happening ab please ye karo but by the time they did that we went into april right feb and march mein immediately agar corrective measure aa jata so then it wouldn't have probably caused and today the farmers have to charge higher they've been losing money for last two years how much longer and you know banker is not going to Say, sir, you are doing great service. You know, वो पीछे पड़ गया हमारे and you know they is talking of you know taking over our assets, properties and everything. So you know the what is the farmer to do? You know, all talk and you know poultry farmer doesn't get anything free. Yet. We are not you know we don't get power free. We don't get you know our our loans don't get don't get mapped. You know nothing and uh, and and we are such duffers that we didn't even go ask for any mafia. Right? We only said please give us. restructuring and postponement so that we'll pay back our loan you know maybe with a little bit of relaxation but we got nothing out of that and it's understandable also because we were not the only ones affected like in 2006 where we were the only ones affected today every sector of the country is uh, is hit and i think our government is not so rich that they can keep throwing away money when us and uk are recognizing they can't do that 
right so but i think it's also created huge opportunities uh, sanjay i think 2006 mein jo hua tha from then to now we have grown five times yes so i feel this covid is now giving us the flip to grow three four times over the next next, uh, the next scale up yeah but it's up to us to use it you know i think if you want to sit on our ass and think somebody will do it nahi nahi aaya hoga we have to do it yeah we did one last question uh, uh, and it's a very interesting question that's come from suresh kumar on youtube and i'll ask uh, direct this question to you suresh what is the benefit of becoming an egg farmer versus choosing other professions so what do i tell you no i'll tell you my life right my father came to this city with 5000 rupees started as an egg farmer today i've bought almost every drink a dream car of mine and whatever i bought is not you know it's not like i don't care for it a ferrari and all that but point is you know i get to be the world international egg commission chair you know i i'm invited today i go to fao un and you know i get to go places it's because of egg right we have a house in jubilee hills my sisters have houses in jubilee hills you know we all living luxurious life it's because of egg now did everybody who do this no they didn't get it you know i mean ultimately you have to work hard my father dedicated himself to that even now he clearly clearly keeps telling us you know when my son was coming out with us first thing he told me and him that he says the moment he sees his cell phone in front of a farmer put him in a car and send him home right the moment he's you know he's not paying attention to what the farmer is saying i mean sit there nothing he says if he takes his phone out of his pocket send him home you know that's what he said and that's how seriously we take this and you know and so i think indian poultry is going to grow between 6 to 8 times in the next 20 years and maybe more also uh, you know but minimum i think uh, sanjay will be 6 times so it will be a 6 6 to 8 lakh crore industry in the next 20 years now nothing is automatic nothing will happen come and fall in your lap uh, you have to work uh, you know and poultry unfortunately is not a remote control business in the sense you know you can't uh, like rawsab used to say you know talk to the chicken and it will talk back to you by giving you more money so by talking he meant you know be in the farm see what is you know are the little things being taken care of and today i think more and more we need to be more savvy about biosecurity Uh, these are the things we need to uh, because uh, the modern day media the ngos and all that have become very aggressive in how they put it out and and you know and like they like they say you know by the time good news puts its shoes on the bad news is already all over the world and that's the world we live in right good or bad uh, in this twitter and social media world so i think we have to be very conscious that you know we are not caught doing anything wrong and i think biosecurity is fantastic we are seeing that sanjay people are following proper biosecurity and all that because they have great genetics today saving you lot of feed you know giving you fantastic egg production for 100 weeks you can probably get out 500 eggs but it won't happen uh, with without great biosecurity and all that and you know and i have my experience sanjay if you are spending on antibiotics then your business is already screwed uh, that means you already have a bad uh, economics going on the less you spend on antibiotics the better is your business uh, and that's that's i can clearly i can demonstrate that any time and i think that's what the industry needs to recognize so the opportunities are great but yeah it's not like a static thing your competition is also been like in india everything will be highly competitive ultra competitive but who knows you know i mean uh, there are people selling eggs for 12 rupees now and selling out they don't have enough production uh, so And and you know and and so that's where uh, you have to come in, and because entrepreneurship is not easy, na no, Sanjay, it is not uh, you know you an entrepreneur doesn't get a break. You are on, you know, you are sleeping. You think about business, you know, you are uh, I don't know on a holiday. It won't leave your head. So <laughs> completely, sir. Wonderful. Thank you, uh, Raghav, and thank you, Suresh, for this wonderfully engaging session. I am. I love putting it together, and I'm sure the the audience uh, gained a lot out of your uh, out of your wisdom. Thank you very much, and I would now hand it over back to Shabu. I want to take this opportunity, Sanjay. Thank you very much for moderating this. Uh, really, my great. pleasure, Suresh. Anytime.
and raghav uh, as usual uh, thank, thank you, you so you. much you've been a great talk to the industry uh, i think of course that comes from you are as a professional you are a friend of good health and and it's i think and we are fortunate that we make up uh, happen to be at the right package to help i think public health and that's what i have always uh, uh, counted as a greatest blessing that you know my father chose the right business to be in uh, to make his life he was a communist but i don't know somehow he's from jadavpur right i told you sanjay he studied in jadavpur yeah. so he oh. didn't get spoiled by the bengalis uh, you know and he came back and became a businessman and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and so and so it's been uh, brilliant for us so thank you very much thank you thank, thank you so much thank you thank sanjay thank you sir bye bye thank you thank you um on behalf of shri divas of arms and the entire and the entire team and on my own behalf i extend a very hearty vote of thanks to all the speakers for gracing your important work and sharing with us your findings and opinions today i thank mr suresh uthuri state visionary and is always promoting it as a holistic nutrition source that is required for human body for sharing his thoughts with us today i also extend my thanks to tim who is who was unable to be here with us on live but i graciously sent his presentation with a lot of knowledge shared with us and uh, dr raghav sunil for being here with us and explaining about the benefits of egg consumption and also bursting some of the myths around egg consumption a special thanks to mr sanjay mukherjee who sparing his valuable time and is also spreading knowledge through his magazine indian poetry review thank you everyone for being such a wonderful audience uh, we have received some very good questions uh, uh, with respect to uh, poultry industry and also egg consumption as such so uh, thank you all thank you i also thank the team behind uh, this uh, webinar and we'll be live for some more time if you have any questions or queries you can post it in the chat and also you can mail it to the uh, mail id that is being provided here questions. all the questions will be answered uh, if some of the questions were missed in the chat uh, we will definitely get back to you on those thank you all questions thank you. Uh, all the an answers to those queries will be answered on the srinivasa farms time if you have any questions or queries you can post it in the chat thank you also you can mail it to the uh, mail id that is being provided here questions. all the questions will be answered uh, if some of the questions were missed in the chat uh, we will definitely get back to you on those thank you all questions thank you. i also thank uh, all the an answers to those queries will be answered on the srinivasa farms time if you have any Thank you. Questions will be answered. Uh, if some of the questions were missed in the chat, uh, we will definitely get back to you on those you all questions. Uh, all the an answers to those queries will be answered on the Srinivas Sir Farms. Time if you have any questions. Thank you. Also, you can make. questions will be answered uh, if some of the questions were missed in the chat uh, we will definitely get back to you on those you all questions uh, all the an answers to those queries will be answered on the srinivas sir farms if you have any queries you can make thank you also you can make questions will be answered uh, if some of the questions Just in the chat, we will definitely get back. Okay, I guess if anyone has any questions, yeah. Once again, thank you everyone for being a part of this. Uh, thank you so much. i think uh, the poultry industry has a great future and hopefully we all will be part of that and enjoy that
Once again, thank you everyone for being uh, part of this. Uh, thank you so much. I think uh, the poultry industry is a lag.